Hi everybody and welcome to a new installment in the Generating Sound with Neural Networks series. Last time we built an audio pre-processing pipeline and we extracted log spectrograms from the free sound digit dataset. This time we're going to use all of that extracted features for training our variational autoencoder. We already trained a variational autoencoder in this series earlier and it was in a video where we actually used the Amnis dataset. So this means that we already have all the facilities that we need to train a variational autoencoder. In other words, we have the train script, that's the one that I have opened here in PyCharm. So what we need to do in this video, and it's not really going to take a long time, is changing a few things so that we can load the FSDD uh, dataset instead of the MNIST dataset. Okay, so Let's take a look at uh, this uh, script real quick. So, or at least like how we are going to use like all of these facilities that we've built. So the first thing is we are going to uh, load the training data set. And here we have a load amnist function and we want to swap it with a load FSDD function. Then we're going to train an autoencoder, well, specifically a variational autoencoder. And finally, we're going to save it to a folder called uh, model. Okay, so let's do like the main change in this script, which is rebuilding like this load amnist function. Instead of load amnist, as I said, we're going to have the load fsdd function. Okay, so this function is going to take as argument the spectrograms path. So this is the path to all the spectrograms that we extracted in the previous video. Now, let me show you what they, what this spectrum look like in our, in my file system. So if you follow it along with the series of videos, now you should have a folder structure similar to this regarding the FSDD data set. So here you have all the uh, audio samples with the sound digits and here you would have another folder called spectrograms with all the log spectrograms that we extracted in the previous video. So what we want to do is just loading all of these spectrograms. Okay, so now let's go back to PyCharm. So I'm gonna remove all of this stuff because we don't need it and we're gonna just re-implement it from scratch. So what we wanna get uh, in the end is this X train. So this X train is basically all the spectrograms so and this is going to be our uh, training uh, our train set now i'm not going to divide the data set into a train set part and a validation uh, set because i mean just to keep things simple but if you are doing things like uh, on a production level or you want to experiment like with more complexity you should definitely do that for evaluation reasons Okay, so what about X train? So X train here is going to be set to an empty list, and we're going to just fill it up with all the spectrograms. Okay, so now we need to loop through all of the spectrograms that we have here in this folder. So how do we do that? Well, we can use os.walk. So we'll do it for root underscore because uh, we don't want to know the, the subdirectories uh, subdirectories that we may have and then file name so this is the list of file names that we have in a directory in os.walk now i have to import os and i'll do that up here and i can get rid of this import here because i don't need the mnist dataset anymore and so now I have OS, I'll do OS.walk and I have to pass the spectrograms path over there. Okay, so now I have all the file names and I want to go through each of the files and load them. So I'll do for file name in file names and here the first thing that I have to do is reconstructing the full file path associated to a given file. So I'll do file path is equal to os.path.join and I'll join the root there with the file name. Okay. So now I have the file path and the next thing that I want to do is just loading the spectrogram. So 
for that, given here you, you see all of these spectrograms where NumPy arrays, arrays and we saved them as NPYs, so what we can do is just using NumPy to load them back. So I need to import NumPy and I'll do a import NumPy as NP and I'll go back into the function and do spectrogram is equal to NumPy dot load and I'll pass in the file path. Cool, now I have the spectrogram. So the next thing is adding, appending the spectrogram to the X-train list. So I'll do X-train dot append and I'll pass in the spectrogram. Cool, so at the end of this loop over here, I'll have all of these spectrograms loaded and stored in this X-train list. Now, this is a list X-train and we need to cast it to a NumPy array because that's what uh, TensorFlow needs for running training. So we'll do a X, not Z, but X-train is equal to NumPy dot array and we'll pass in X-train so that we'll cast it to a NumPy array. You may think that we can return this X-train or our training set and we are all done, but there's a problem and the problem is the shape of spectrogram. So if we take a look at the shape of all of these spectrograms that we have, a, so the first dimension is equal to the number of bins which come out from the short time Fourier transform that we use for getting the log spectrograms and the second dimension is equal to the number of frames. So this is a, a dimension that has to do with the temporal aspect of uh, the spectrograms. Now, if you really don't know what I'm talking about, number of frequency bins or frames, don't worry, just like go check out my previous series of videos on the short time Fourier transform. I'll leave one of those up here. What's the problem? Well, we are using a variational autoencoder with convolutional layers. Now, the convolutional layers expect arrays as inputs that have three dimensions. And here we only have two dimensions. If you remember when we trained variational, our variational autoencoder with the MNIST dataset, each of the images of the MNIST dataset had three dimensions. It was a three-dimensional array, and the third dimension was what we call the number of channels. In the case of MNIST, uh, we have that each image has one as the number of channels. That's normal because we are dealing with grayscale images. If you are dealing instead with RGB images, you would have three channels. Okay, so what we need to do at the end of the day is taking this spectrograms and adding or reshaping the array adding one extra dimension like this so for doing that what we need to do is just using reshaping facilities that come uh, directly with the numpy package so let's do that so we can take x train and we'll just do x train we'll pass three dots and we'll do numpy dots new axis. And so the result of this will be an array that has this shape. So first of all, the first dimension is 3000 and these are the number of samples that we have in the data set. But then we have the dimensionality of each of the spectrograms for each of these samples. So we have 256 that's equal to it's basically the number of bins, then we have the number of frames, that's going to be equal to 64. And finally, and because we've added this new axis, we have one. In other words, what we are doing here is we are treating these spectrograms as grayscale images. So this is the trick that we can use for fooling a, an architecture that usually deals with images and for letting it use or letting it understand audio-based data. Cool. Okay, so now we have our uh, training set so we can return it. So we'll do return X train like that. And we should be done with this part. So load FSDD. 
And now the thing that we need to do here is ju it's just swapping alert amnest with alert FS FSDD. And of course, we need to pass an argument here, which is the spectrograms path, and which is the path to this folder over here. And I'm going to cheat here because I have it up here and I'm going to copy and paste it here. Cool. Okay, so we have this concept called spectrograms path and I'm going to pass it here. Then I want to remove all of this things because we only return the train set. Okay, then I also need to remove this slicing uh, for a simple reason, because we only have 3,000 samples in our uh, data set, so <laughs> we don't need that. Actually, it would throw an error. So, yeah, here we are done. Now, there's one, a few final touches here. First of all, we need to ch change the architecture of this variational autoencoder. So the input shape is going to be different, and it's going to be equal to two, uh, 256, 64, and 1. But rather than like rewriting all of this architecture from scratch, I'm going to cheat once again, copying this one in. And the reason I can do this is because I already did this earlier and I actually trained the model. Okay, so here we go with the new architecture. So the input shape is the one that we would expect. And then this variational autoencoder, the encoder part and the relative decoder part have five convolutional layers. And you can see like all the number of filters that we have here. Okay, so before we launch the training script, a few final um, edits. So first of all, the number of epochs, I'm going to just bump this up to 150 and the batch size is going to be equal to 64. And final thing, I want to jump into, let me just like close this because otherwise it's going to be confusing. And so here we are at video number 13 in the series and I want to get into the autoencoder. And here we have the variational autoencoder class and there's a, an attribute here, that's this reconstruction loss weight that was set to 1000. And here I want to just add three zeros to this. One, two, three. And if you're wondering why I did this, it's just because I tried this uh, architecture already and I saw that with this type of parameter, value for this parameter, it works uh, quite well. The only thing that remains to be done is actually just uh, running this and see if we have any errors in the code or if it's just running fine okay yeah so this is launching okay so let's see um yes i think it's it's working it's working yes it's working cool that's great i'm not gonna wait until the end of this uh, training session because as i said i already trained it earlier now the in the next video what we're going to be doing is basically taking this um, trained model here and use it for inference or in other words for generating um, digits or utterances s sound utterances of these digits so yes this is going to be like the the last part of this series i hope i'll see you in the next video that's all for today have fun with this training session and just know that it's going to take quite some time to finish training Okay, see you next time. Take care.